Why do we need divine direction? Our decisions in life are based on the information we have and our current level of exposure. This is one of the reasons why we need divine direction. Our decisions in life are usually based on the information we have and our current level of exposure, which many times is limited. I need divine direction because if God does not direct me, I can sit down and believe this is the prophetic destiny of Koinonia. I can look out and say, wow, there's a crowd inside and outside. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. It's okay. Nothing more. Whereas, God's idea, God's mandate upon my life is the nations. Are you getting what I'm saying? Abraham had about 316 or so men. But his prophetic destiny was the entire earth. Our decisions are limited. Our informations are limited. And we make decisions based on those informations. Let me tell you something. Your decisions and your perspective about life can be wrong. That's why you need divine direction. You need divine direction. Jesus said something very interesting. Um, in Luke chapter 11. Let's look at Luke chapter 11. From verse 34 to 36. Jesus was speaking about light. He said, be sure that your light is not darkness. That means you can be looking and you can be thinking that you are walking in illumination. Whereas you are walking in darkness. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, your body is also full of darkness. 35. There's a warning for us. Everyone read. Want to read. Take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not dark. That means you can be making decisions based on a truth you think you know, whereas it's wrong. Hallelujah. For instance, I will never marry a man who is rich, who is not rich, for instance. I will never marry a broke man. I don't want to suffer. That's a light that you have. You think it is light, whereas when you allow God to help you, you will see that it's darkness. What if you marry the rich man and he becomes poor two years after your marriage? As poor as you would have run away before the marriage. What is the same thing? Are you seeing that? I will only marry a, a lady who can crime some 119. It's a mindset. You think it's light, whereas it is darkness. So we make a lot of decisions in our lives. I will never get a job that gives me 20,000. There is a job for you to start out. You say, God forbid, I'm bigger than 20,000. If I cannot start with 250,000, except I'm not a Christian. Seven years, there's no job. The highest you have seen is 30,000. Whereas if you were faithful, one of your customers would have come and you would have left that place. It was the test of faithfulness. You've never held 50,000 of your own, yet you talk about 250,000 as if it's five naira. Mindsets. So, we need divine decisions that can be higher than what we would have decided for ourselves. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12. We need divine direction because our perceptions about life can be wrong. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then said he, thou hast well seen. That means you can see wrongly. He said, for I will hasten my word that you have now seen. That means your speed in life is also based on your perception. You don't see wrongly, you will not move fast in life. But the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Very quickly. What does it take to receive divine direction from God? I really feel sad. I'm just doing a lecture. I'm, I'm so sorry. Our time is gone and I want us to pray. Number one. 
requirements to be divinely directed by God. Number one, you must admit that you are limited. You must admit. You must break your pride and admit that you are limited. It is not, listen, it's not an insult. Look up, please. I want to teach you this about life. Please and please, do not be embarrassed when you find out you do not know everything. Are you hearing me? Do not, even if you are a celebrity, do not be embarrassed that you do not know everything. Every time I see our daddy come and sit down here, I am very humbled by his humility. Brothers and sisters, this is a professor. The brightest and the finest in his field. Yet, our daddy will come and sit down quietly and you see him jotting down. And a small boy like me, his son is just talking. It's like I'm talking to my father and he's writing. How many of us can have that humility? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must admit that you are limited. No matter how prophetic you think you are. No matter how apostolic you think you are. Many times when I cry before God, I say, Lord, help this small boy. If you don't help me, I will make a lot of decisions that are foolish and stupid. That's how I cry before God. I'm not insulting myself. I know it's the truth. And I say, Lord, send your word. Send me the word of the Lord. How many of us here can admit that I am great, but I am limited? If I depend on my strength alone, I will mix intelligent and foolish decisions. If you depend on your ability to choose a wife, you will choose nonsense. If you depend on your ability to choose a job, you may choose rubbish. It may look nice, but that is the road of perdition. If you choose where you want to stay by yourself, you say, I want to stay in Lagos or Abuja, my Tama or somewhere there, somewhere peaceful. I don't want, some of you are already laughing, but God is saying, that's not my path for you. You are saying, I take authority over it. You really think it would have been my desire to be doing ministry in Zaria? How about gentlemen? I know what God has put in me. Oh, it's not pride. He tried for me. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. You think I don't want to be in a place where my grace will be or not? Where after a sermon, a man of God will drop a jeep somewhere and say, Man of God, this is a little seal of your apostleship. You think I will not want a place where they will buy suits? And members who just come and build a house for me or buy me a private jet but you see listen it is not of him that willeth it is not of him that runneth if you cannot wait for God to direct you I'll never forget I was rejoicing the year we we're about to prepare for koinonia to start I was so happy because I was saying Lord my share my assignment now is over let me run and find something very useful and do let me go and open up a very big ministry somewhere and big business somewhere let me just enjoy my life and then god summoned a meeting at once and when i went i almost fainted the day god told me those who were around my reaction it was like how about god how about god and i've come to a point where i don't give god if god says stay in zaria forever i stay in zaria forever I honor great men of God like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Look at the place. Look at the kind of anointing that man of God has. And look at where he is. Look at where his international headquarters is. There are some decisions people take. When you look, you know God spoke to them. The devil will never come and tell you that kind of decision. Even you, you know it's God that spoke. Praise the Lord. But there are many of us. We will never admit that we are limited. We like judging things. I want a, min a ministry that um, is this and that and that and that. And God is saying, this is not the part. Say, I want a healing ministry. God said, you are not called into a healing ministry. 
Say, but that's what is raining. That's I want to chop too. God says, uh -uh, you are an evangelist. You will not have a church. You say, so how will I get the cars and the houses? God will say, you just preach. Say, Lord, I need a base for my ministry. There must be a church. You open a church and all the trouble in your life comes from that church. Say divine direction. Number two, if you want divine direction in your life, you must engage in the ministry of prayer. There is no direction without prayer. Please listen to me. Prayer is a mighty weapon that positions you for divine direction. When you pray, God directs you through certain ways. These are subtopics under prayer now. It is prayer that will open you up to any other way that God will lead you. Please take what I'm saying seriously. It doesn't matter how else. It is prayer that will open the door. When you pray, the first way God can direct you is through light from scripture. Psalm 119 verse 105. Just write it. It's a lecture so that we don't have to go there. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word, O God, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hebrews chapter 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners, so God speaks in diverse manners, but in these last days he has chosen to focus on speaking to us through his son. Hallelujah. So God speaks to men how? In diverse man manners. But in these last days, that his primary means of communication is through his son, which is the word. The word of God. Number two, when you pray, you will hear the voice of the Spirit. Isaiah 30 verse 21 says, You shall hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. The direct voice of the Spirit, either audibly or speaking to you through your spirit man. Ah, I wish I had time to walk this. John 16 verse 13 also it says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Guide you. Guide you. The third way, when you engage in prayer, you will receive divine encounters. Dreams, visions, revelatory experiences. There are lots of instances in scripture where God used divine encounters to bring revelations to people. Especially dreams and visions. Genesis 41 verse 1 to 7. We see that the prophetic destiny of Egypt. They were forewarned. Genesis 41. Don't turn there. Just write it please. Verse 1 to 7. It was the Pharaoh who had a dream. About the period of plenty and the period of lack. And it helped them to prepare. In Exodus chapter 3. Verse 2 to 3, Moses had an encounter that revealed to him his prophetic destiny as a deliverer. It is one way God speaks and directs men. 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15. 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15. After Solomon loved the Lord and he offered a thousand bond offerings, the Bible says God came to him in a dream and he received an impartation and God gave him certain revelations about the spirit of understanding that would be at work in him to rule Israel. In Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 10, they all record the conversion of Paul. Remember, it was a divine encounter. Paul had a vision where he saw Jesus Christ. And then he became blind. But even in his blindness, the Bible says he went to the house of Judas and Paul was praying. While he was praying, he saw um, um, who, who is the Ananias in a dream, in a vision coming? Because that's what God told Ananias. He said, Brother Saul, he's in a house, he prayed, and behold, he has seen you in a vision. So you can see how encounters connected men to their prophetic destiny. The fourth way God will give you divine direction and guidance in your life is through spiritual authorities. Fathers, mentors, 
deacons and elders as we have it in our various and then the aged ones too elderly people not just elders in church men who have had the advantage of age in their lives but my focus here is fatherhood and mentorship one great platform to receive spiritual direction you can be struggling over a thing for years and you meet a man and in five minutes he supplies wisdom to your life hallelujah wisdom to your life i'll never forget one of our boards of trustees i met him one time and we got talking and i was sharing with him about something and while i was talking to me it was a big mountain i was sharing and he was just looking at me and after i finished saying it he just laughed do this do this do that and that was the end of it it's amazing that what is a mountain to you somebody has been marching that mountain for many years hallelujah it's amazing that we go through challenges in our lives and you think it will overwhelm you i've shared it again and again even with the little opportunity that god has given for ministry and counseling when i talk to people they come with seemingly mountains of challenges and while they are talking i'm just looking at them and wondering is this it this is what you call a mountain and i just tell them do this do that and that's the end of it one of my great friends was struggling in ministry things were tied down honestly things were really really tied down and he came and met me he said man of god what is the way out what do i need to do this you know this there's no opening there's no door opening in ministry and i just told him this is what god is saying a b c x y z and that was how his ministry opened up in very strange ways a great man many of you know him he's called bishop bernard jordan he has a son called manasseh jordan they are great prophets but he used to he used to keep a certain kind of hair and it seemed like it his ministry was not received because people doubted him because of the way he dressed the way he looked and the way he carried out his prophetic ministry but genuine man of god fabulously wonderful man of god and one day mike mudo called him and said i want to have a meeting with you he said if you adjust a b c d in your life i think you will be an extremely great man of god and he listened and the moment he took those steps brothers and sisters it was another dimension wisdom the last way that god can direct you is through the prophetic ministry the prophetic ministry both the prophetic office and revelatory gifts of prophecy i'll dwell here for two minutes and we'll pray in first samuel write the scriptures the encounter between saul and samuel was through the prophetic ministry direction came for his destiny through the prophetic ministry first samuel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 7 it was when saul met the prophet that his life was altered forever i'm not talking of all these prophet prophet things that we have around there are many people who say they are prophets let me tell you the truth they are not prophets they have revelatory gifts the prophetic office has an anointing you never meet a true prophet of god or one who is anointed to function in dimensions of the prophetic it must not be called a prophet it could be called an apostle like like apostle johnson suleiman or it could even be called a pastor but that he has that potent prophetic dimension you will never meet him and your life will remain the same i tell you the truth in second kings chapter 8 from verse 7 to 15 i want us to read that one second kings chapter 8 guys don't project it until i ask us to do so so that our time is gone i mean this project this one now second kings 8 verse 7 to 15 is the an interesting story between prophet elisha the king of syria called ben haddad and one boy called hazael who later became king let me show you how that god can speak over the prophetic destiny of a man and bring direction to your life through the prophetic let's read it very quickly elisha came to ben, to damascus and ben haddad the king of syria was sick and it was told him saying the man of god is come hit our next verse 
And the king said unto Hazael, Hazael was his boy, like his servant, take a present in thy hand 